Robbie, what's on your radar? Well, today is the one-year anniversary of the Capitol riot. On January 6, 2020, hundreds of President Donald Trump's most militant supporters overran the police, smashed the windows of the building, and forced their way inside. They vandalized congressional offices and halted the certification of Joe Biden's win. It was an embarrassing spectacle, one for which Trump bears significant personal responsibility. Not Antifa, not Democrats, not the deep state, but Trump. For weeks, he had made false statements about the outcome and asserted his loss was illegitimate. Remember this? I'd say I did a good job, but you can't ever accept when they steal and rig and rob. He fed his voters lies and promised them that the results could be overturned, even though they couldn't, perhaps by the Supreme Court, perhaps by Vice President Mike Pence. On January 6th, he spoke to the crowds in Washington, D.C., and told his supporters, we will never give up, we will never concede. He said, quote, we will stop the steal, and he encouraged his people to march to the Capitol and, quote, give our Republicans the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. What followed was certainly bold. Among the thousands gathered, a smaller number stormed the Capitol and trashed it. The incident was so humiliating and seemingly counterproductive that many conservative media figures firmly entrenched in MAGA world privately reached out to Trump to demand that he stop it while it was happening. Indeed, members of Trump's own family were concerned. Donald Trump Jr. texted his father's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, and begged him to ask the president to denounce the out-of-control violence and destruction. They all knew, or at least they presumed, that mob violence stoked by Trump would destroy his legacy and prevent him from ever running for president again. Well, that prediction has proven to be wrong. One year later, Trump still enjoys tremendous support from the Republican Party. Many Republican figures who condemned the rioting, on the other hand, have paid a steep price. That's Pence and Mitch McConnell's approvals. Certainly the McConnells and Pences of the world would have preferred for Trump to go away voluntarily and quietly. He has refused to do so and has given every indication that he will run again in 2024. I fully expect him to do so. The surest option for preventing him from returning to the Oval Office was conviction during his second impeachment trial. But the 57 to 43 vote in the Senate fell 10 votes short. A conviction for inciting the riot would have correctly located significant responsibility for the chaos where it belonged, with Trump. Alas, this did not happen. Instead, the U.S. House of Representatives convened a select committee, the U.S. House Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol, that continues to search for new answers and information and seeks to question figures like Steve Bannon, Devin Nunes, and Katrina Pearson, and also tangential figures from outside the administration, like Alex Jones and Roger Stone. By demanding testimony and records from people who were not government figures at the time of the riot and had the First Amendment right to organize peacefully in opposition to the election results, the committee's work should be of increasing concern to civil libertarians. In any case, there's no mystery here to solve. Trump should have been held accountable. But given that the Senate vote failed to convict, there's nothing really more to be done. It's over. As for the individuals who entered the Capitol and engaged in property destruction, well, they should face charges that are in line with their actual crimes. Like Trump, they should be held responsible for their actions. But on this front, government authorities have given every indication of following a post-9-11 script, treating the criminals as not mere vandals, but as domestic terrorists of a sort. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, for instance, called on the Department of Homeland Security to add January 6 protesters to the no-fly list. Watch. We are here today because the folks, the people, the insurrectionists who breached the U.S. Capitol fall under the definition of threats to the homeland and should be immediately added to the TSA no-fly list. The no-fly list is a civil liberties nightmare. It's secretive, it's difficult or impossible to get off of it. There's no due process. Additionally, some January 6 detainees have been held in jail awaiting trial for months, subjected in some cases to solitary confinement for 23 hours each day. Jacob Chansley, the QAnon shaman whose horns and lack of a shirt drew the media's attention and made him the riot's de facto leader, was sentenced to 41 months in prison after already spending 10 months in solitary confinement. Chansley had no real opportunity to prove his innocence in court. Faced with a potential 20-year sentence, he made the wise decision to plead guilty, as virtually all defendants do. The events of January 6th were tragic and disturbing. It was beyond the pale for the sitting president to falsely contend that he won re-election and encourage his supporters in a violent fury that culminated in vandalism and the at the nation's capital. It's important not to understate the damage done by both the mob and by Trump himself. 
but it's also important for the government to avoid overreaction. The 9-11 terror attacks inspired the Bush administration to launch a disastrous war on terror, invade sovereign nations, kill American citizens abroad, and engage in routine surveillance of Americans domestically, and violate civil liberties in a dozen other far-reaching ways. Frustratingly, the mainstream media has given every indication that it would provide intellectual cover to any Biden administration effort to respond to January 6th in a similarly extreme way. Every day is January 6th now, wrote the New York Times editorial board recently. Well, let's hope not. So, I mean, that's my take on the, on the Capitol riot. Very bad. Trump is to blame. He should have been, well, I mean, individuals who entered the Capitol are responsible for their own decisions, but Trump's rhetoric caused, uh, encouraged the mob, even though he didn't directly direct them to do that. He, he was impeached. He should have been removed or barred or whatever that vote was going to result in. But they didn't do that, so he's essentially acquitted, and that's it. Once you're acquitted, it's over. Yeah. And there's no, there's no information for the committee. It's kind of interesting, the text, but they're not really there's, – there's no one else to blame here. And, and this kind of endless, far-reaching investigation, the media loves it. This is the mainstream media's favorite subject, but – there's not going to be any satisfaction. There's not going to be because the, we 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 know who did. We already caught the suspect. We had a trial for them. They were acquitted. It's over. Yeah, the the, the mistake that Democrats made uh, came on the early morning hours of of January seventh, and and they and they can't get back this moment. And that was, they 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 good for them. They came back in and good for Pence. He came back in. He said, let's get to work. They finished the business of counting the votes and certifying the election. Great. They should have immediately, at that moment, gaveled in impeachment proceedings. Mm -hmm. And over in the House said, uh, here's the article. It's, there's one article of impeachment. Trump did this. Put it to a vote right now. They would have easily gotten them. You know, they would have gotten Liz Cheney and her crew, plus all of the Democrats. And then you send it over to the Senate immediately. Now it's January 7th. He's still the sitting president and you get the media talking about a trial, and now you have Republicans getting asked on January 7th, do you support the impeachment, you, you know, are you, how are you going to vote on the impeachment articles? And you get that impeachment trial going as fast as you possibly can. And I don't know if that results in an impeachment or not, but it, it, it treats it with the gravity and the seriousness with which it deserves. They might have made him, he might have resigned. He could have resigned. There to was avoid talk getting, about him resigning. Everyone else was resigning. Right. He had no cabinet left. Right. They're all gone. They resigned after, say, uh, uh, DeVos and uh, Elaine Chao. Yeah. Right. They resigned, saying, it's, this is a horrible thing you allowed to happen, and we do blame you for it. And they resigned. Right. And, and so he would have nobody left. And so then the question would be, will he make it these three weeks? Right. Does he then resign in order to avoid some type of prosecution? Like, you have completely changed the risk calculus for him. Instead, Pelosi gaveled the House out of session and said, we're adjourned. Biden's president, like they were, they were, they were content with that outcome, that they had successfully They thought it would be enough to be rid of Trump. It was not enough. Right. What, what made them think that their instincts on how an event would influence Trump's political standing were to be trusted? They had been wrong every single step of the way, and they were wrong again. Like they, they, they had him down at that moment, and that was the moment that they, that they needed to at right. least try to finish them if they were serious about what they were doing. Well, and the same is, is true of, the, of McConnell, Pence-type Republicans who are not, not by any right. stretch never Trump, but would rather not have to deal with Trump and right. thought, well, this is it. Right. And, and if will you will never go away quietly. And if, and if you get McConnell while he's still hot right. on the 7th and 8th. He was pretty mad. Having to, having to answer questions about how he feels like the, the Republican caucus ought to deal with Trump, you, it, could, it, it very easily could have gone the, gone the other right. way. And then people can't say, well, he's not the sitting president, so that's weird to impeach a right. former president, which, to their credit, to, in their defense, it is weird to impeach a former president. Because where, where do you draw the line? Right. Re-impeach Clinton? No. Give, give the Republicans time. Yes. <laughs> right. Actually, in the next, they'll, they'll, get Obama, they'll get Obama for Solyndra. Yeah. Benghazi. Ben, oh, Benghazi. Benghazi oh. Obviously, Benghazi. We yeah. still have questions. Uh, but Team Rising will join us next, and we will not be discussing Benghazi. No, we won't. Stay, stay tuned anyway. <laughs>